It's Miss Elaine from the Firehouse Art Center, and we are here with another virtual arts, um, a virtual kids arts class. And today, since it is Friday, it is Multimedia Day. Woohoo! So we are going to be making um, some little sculptures using uh, coffee filters and pipe cleaners. So just two supplies. Uh, but we are going to be painting the filters with watercolor to make them all bright and vibrant. And we have two sculptures that we're going to do. One of them is a fairy dancer um, with the painted filter right here for the dress and the pipe cleaner sculpture for the body. And the next one is a dragon. So there are many different ways to do the wings, um, but this one has the fiery red and orange wings. And I'll show you how to make um, both of these sculptures and also how to make the uh, filter that goes um, with them. So I'm gonna put these to the side. And so it's a mythological creatures week. So we are on our last day of classes. Um, on Wednesday we made printed mermaids using styrofoam plates to make our prints for the tail. So just teaching you guys a little bit about relief printing and how that can make making art easier because if you see there are three um, mermaids right here but if I were to paint each of their scales it would take a really long time. Instead I just painted my plate and printed each of them and it took like a tenth of the time that it would take to paint them. So uh, relief printing uh, mermaids was on Wednesday and on Monday we did our drawing unicorns. So I'm trying to make these classes a little bit structured. Um, just that Monday we do drawing, to, uh, Wednesday we do painting, and Friday we do some kind of multimedia sculpture art using different mediums and different supplies. Um, but hopefully still supplies that you have at your home. So um, I'm going to move these to the side. And so I'm with the Firehouse Art Center and we're in Longmont. We're located on 4th and Kaufman. Um, and we're closed right now. But we're going to be opening up soon um, and we're looking forward to that. And this weekend, actually today, we are debuting our first online exhibit. So it's going to be a page on our website that is uh, going to highlight some local artists um, on an online exhibit and market. So stay tuned for that. We're partnering with uh, the LDDA for downtown Longmont's second Friday. And while we can't do um, an in-person second Friday, uh, which we definitely miss doing those, uh, we have a virtual second Friday happening on our Facebook page at 6 p.m. And we are also going to be opening up that online ex exhibition uh, at 6 p.m. as well. So uh, definitely check that out. Check out all the cool things the Firehouse is doing right now. And our website is firehouseart.org. But we'll get started with our class. And actually, I guess I should. Well, I'll just turn the screen down. We can go ahead and get started. So. That is my work surface. So for supplies, you are just gonna need your pipe cleaners and coffee filters. Um, 
So these are the ones that I painted earlier today. Now, if you have the styrofoam plates that you used for um, Wednesday's class, it's a perfect thing to put underneath your coffee filter. So these are just the styrofoam trays that I use for printing, uh, and they're really great for art making, even if you're just using them uh, just to protect your surface and to paint stuff on. So you need, you don't need them. You can paint on a paper plate if you want, um, but they're just really useful. So the only two things that you're gonna need are supply-wise, your pipe cleaners, you can have varying different colors, and your coffee filters, and watercolor. You can use pan watercolors, or you can use these guys, which I've been kind of promoting as my favorite art supply. I'm not sponsored by them at all. I just love liquid watercolors. I think they're amazing. So if you get a chance to, all I have are red, yellow, and blue, which are our primary colors. And as you guys know, um, with your primary colors, you can mix any different color, so all of your secondary colors, um, and we're gonna get started. I want to paint my uh, coffee filters first because I wanna make sure that they get a chance to dry. Um, they dry really quickly, but we are gonna be handling them in making our sculptures, so I wanna make sure that they're pretty dry. That's why I did these two guys earlier so that um, I would have some to uh, do my samples with but I'm gonna put those to the side and I can kind of see some comments coming through. Yay, hi Emma, hi Violet. I see Erin is here. Excellent, let's get started. So you're gonna to wanna to take one of your coffee filters and you're gonna put it on whatever surface you're painting it on. And the first thing that you're gonna do is you are going to paint it with a little bit of water. So you don't want to get it too soaked, but you just want to get it kind of wet. Now, there are special papers called diffusing papers that you can purchase from art supply stores. And diffusing papers are kind of expensive. And I used to purchase them uh, to do this project, but then I was like, these are kind of like coffee filters. And it turns out they're exactly like coffee filters. So now I can just use these coffee filters for the same project and it is a lot cheaper than getting diffusing paper. But the result is the same. Because what happens is when you wet your coffee filter and then you come through with some watercolor, the color diffuses. So that means it spreads. So I'm gonna show you, this is my watercolor right here. I have them in containers. I have red, yellow, and blue. And remember, you want to swish, wipe your brush on the side, and then take your paper towel and just blot it, just like that, okay? That's how you clean your brush, and we wanna clean between each of the colors. So you'll see how the watercolor starts to diffuse into the coffee filter so it blends really well and as we let it sit it'll blend even more so I'm gonna put some red and this is up to you what colors you want to use for your um, your first coffee filter so you can do all one color if you want or you can switch colors so you can do red in the center and then you want to switch so swish, wipe on the side, blot, and I'm gonna do yellow. Okay. So we're just preparing our supplies right now. We're learning a little bit about how the water diffuses the color through the coffee filter and how it assists in blending the orange and red or the yellow and red into orange. Get some more yellow. So this one's kind of um, becoming a pattern of the red on the inside and the yellow on the outside and a little bit of orange where they combine. OK, 
Okay. So that is my first one that I made. And I'm going to bring it up closer. I'm going to put my brush in my water bowl. And there you go. Now if I lift it up, you'll see it's very pretty and colorful and translucent. Now the fun thing about coffee filters with watercolor, um, you do get that translucent bright color and these are great to put on your window as like stained glass pieces. Um, and you can piece them together and the light shines through, uh, but it makes like rainbows in your window. So it's really super cool. So I'm actually gonna take this one and I'm gonna walk it over to my windowsill to dry. So you keep working on yours. So if you have an area that is outside um, where the sun hits it or um, you know on a windowsill where there's a little bit of a breeze and sun that will help your um, coffee filter dry faster, that is a great place to put it. Um, just make sure that you don't put it too in a place that's too windy or it might blow away because it's very light. So now we're gonna get started on our next one. So I did lots of... Um, warm colors on that last coffee filter. And remember our warm colors are orange, yellow, and red. So this one I'm gonna do some cool colors just to mix it up a bit. So same steps, you're gonna take your watercolor brush and you are just going to lightly wet your coffee filter. So having water on your coffee filter is going to help the colors spread and diffuse You don't want too much though, because then it'll take too long to dry. Now, if I, um, by the time we get around to demonstrating the sculpture part of the lesson, if your coffee filters are not dry yet, don't worry about it. You can always come back and watch the second part of the lesson um, when we put our sculptures together after I'm done. That's one of the great things about these live stream classes is you can watch them live and ask questions and make comments. Um, and then you can also watch them later and make your art at your own convenience. You can fast forward, you can stop, you can pause. If I'm going too fast, um, you can watch something over again. So it's a really great way to make art with a teacher, um, but then also take your own time and make the best project that you can make. Okay, so now it is wet. I'm just gonna lift it up and show you guys. Um, there was actually paint here on the tray, so it picked it up. So wetting the paper actually transferred the paint to the filter. But as you can see, my filter is slightly translucent, but it's not dripping, so I didn't add too much water to it. Just enough water so that the colors will spread. Okay, I'll put it back in its tray. Now remember, you don't have to have this tray. This is just helpful for painting. Um, and keeping your surface clean. If you wanted to have a paper towel underneath, you can do that. Um, you can have a paper plate underneath. Anything like that will work. I'm gonna add just a little bit more liquid watercolor to my uh, containers. Now this stuff, the reason why it's one of my favorite tools is because it is these colors are so concentrated um, that the color is super rich and vibrant. So I'm gonna do my cool colors here and as you remember, I'm gonna swish, wipe, blot. My cool colors are blue and green and purple. So blue goes on like this, and you'll see the color starts to spread and diffuse throughout the paper. Okay. I'm just gonna use a little bit of blue in the center then I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to the outside and blue plus yellow makes green. So swish, wipe, blot, add some yellow. And you'll see that it's mixing to make the green color on the outside right here. I don't wanna to put too much yellow because I wanna save the other side for um, red 
And the blue and the red will make purple. Okay, now swish, wipe, blot, and add some red. Move this so you guys can see. And as you can see, it's mixing and making purple right there. Okay. So these kind of all end up looking tie-dyed, just the way that the colors mix and blend together. They look really cool, and as I said, they make really great stained glass decorations because the light still comes through, and they're slightly translucent, but then you still get these bright colors. So I'm going to walk this one over to my windowsill to dry. And you keep going with yours. Okay. So, you can make a whole bunch of those. Um, and the more you have, the more fun projects you can make. So, if you want to keep going with those um, coffee filters, that would be great, or you can put those all to the side, put your supplies to the side, and we are going to start with our sculptures. So I'm going to put these guys in the front. So I have one that has like blues and yellows and reds. Actually, I used all the colors. I kind of went crazy on this one. Um, and I kind of mixed all the colors on this one too. So I was just having fun with them. I really love the way the colors diffuse with this paper. Um, and how they blend and they make all sorts of nice rainbow colors. Uh, so this is one of my favorite projects. Um, one thing that I do with these is I make uh, fall leaves in at the start of fall and you can cut them into cute leaf patterns and you can put them on the um, windows and then when it shines through that you have all these cool patterns of um, colored leaves on your window. It looks really nice. Okay, so I'm going to bring this guy up. So this is our dragon, and he's going to stand over there. Um, he actually stands. I made one that, that was not as successful standing. So, you know, it's just trial and error. you gotta, you got to mess with them, and you got to work with them. So, And here is our dancer, our fairy dancer, and she has a little tab on the bottom so you can spin her like this. Um, so I'm going to put her right here. And what you're going to do first for, we'll do this lady first. Um, I'm going to show you how to make it. You are going to take your pipe cleaner and you are going to create her head by making a loop like this and twisting it. Okay? So you make a loop at the end of your pipe cleaner just like that. And then you twist it. Okay? Then you go down and bend your pipe cleaner in half so that the end of your pipe cleaner touches the end of her neck and you fold it. Okay? So I'm going to show you that too. So this is what you have. You have her head, and you have the rest of the pipe cleaner. You fold that in half so that the end, right here, touches right where her head starts. So you guys can see that. And I'm just showing you different angles just so I know that you guys can see it, because this is upside down to me, um, but I just want to make sure you guys see it. Okay? So it looks like this. We're going to cut it right here at this fold. And just snip. Do not use 
your parents good scissors so if one of your parents sews do not use their sewing scissor to cut pipe cleaners they will get very angry with you so I'm using my just my normal scissors okay you're gonna take your head like this you are going to put your the piece that you cut off right here underneath her neck and you are going to twist it around just like that and you can twist it a couple of times one thing that this does that is good is that it traps that pointy uh, cut part right here that could be um, you know kind of painful if it pokes you so now that you've wrapped your arms around it it's covered that up and it makes it a little bit safer so now you have your body for your person you can use um, the pipe cleaners to make her arms in any way however you want her to dance and basically she's done she was really easy see to do that's her her dress is gonna go right here and you just have to kind of twist it at the top um, we're gonna put that to the side because she is ready to uh, go and we're gonna work on our dragon now our dragon is a little bit more complex so you gotta watch you're gonna do the same thing at the start you're gonna take the end of your dragon right here and you're gonna create a head like this and you are going to do the same thing where you twist it to seal the head okay so there's his head just like that then you are gonna take your pen or pencil and you are going to wrap the pipe cleaner around the pen keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping this is the body of your dragon when you pull it off you've made a little spring for his body just like this okay so turn the head so it's sideways so that you can see so this is what my dragon looks like right now so this is his head and his neck and his very springy body okay awesome so you're gonna put this to the side you're gonna grab onto another pipe cleaner and you are gonna fold it in half and cut it these are your legs so you've got a leg and a leg you're gonna fold each of them in half just like this okay so now you have these two pieces as the leg you're gonna go back to your dragon body and you are gonna slide the leg into the body just like this so now you have the body and two legs and you're gonna take the other one you have a body you're gonna slide this into your dragon just like that and now you have your dragon and he has four legs he has really long legs right now um, if you want to keep them that long you can you can uh, bend them for feet the larger your feet the more stable your dragon is going to be so I'm going to put him down because sometimes it's easier to make his feet while he's standing so at least it'll be even and So you just kind of have to play with it to make sure he is going to be able to stand. And if you want, you can cut off the tops of his toes if they're too big. Okay. So there he is, he's standing, but I'm going to show him side to you so you can see him. There's the little dragon. Now we need to make his dragon tail, so take another pipe cleaner, split it in half, and cut it. 
One half is going to be his tail. You're going to wrap that around the end of his body right here. And that curls around like this. Just like that. Now, this extra part right here, if you want to, you can fold it in half again and cut it. Sometimes dragons have like um, horns or something like that, so you can put them up at the top. Like that. Now, if you have googly eyes, um, googly eyes are always fun. You can put them on either side of your dragon's head, so one here and one there. You can just glue them right on. Or you can leave him without any... Um, any eyes, which is fine, because I just want to make sure that everyone has the supplies at home. So if we don't bring them to the firehouse to put in the mailbox, um, just want to make sure you guys have the stuff that we're using to make. So here's our dragon right here. We have the head, the coiled body created by taking that pipe cleaner and wrapping it around, and then we have the long tail and his little antennas and we have his legs. So he's ready to go too. So this is what he looks like in the end. And this is what the dancer looks like in the end. And I'm gonna give you guys time to go check your coffee filters and see if they are dry and come back and we can make um, these guys together. So I'm gonna go check if mine are dry too see if there's anyone who's commenting, if anyone has come back on. Um, I'm going to take these, put them to the side. We don't need these guys anymore. So go check your coffee filters and we'll meet back here. So mine are semi-dry, um, but I'm just bringing them here just so they can dry at the uh, table next to me. Um, but I'm going to use these guys, that's why I have these guys ready, to uh, make into wings and to the dancer's body. So for the dancer's body, all you want to do is you're going to take your coffee filter, pinch the middle like this, and fold it down like that. So you're going to create kind of like this triangulated um, piece of coffee filter like that. Okay? So if you were to pinch the top like that, it'll look like that on the bottom. So it's already kind of looking like a flower. And you are going to make a tiny, 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 tiny little snip with your scissors. Tiny. You don't want it to be too big. And you are going to fit your dancer right into that tiny little hole. You're going to bring the flower part all the way up to the top and pinch it and twist. Okay? Just like So your flower should stay onto your dancer, just like that. And you can twirl her around, and she has the colorful skirt. You can fluff her skirt or fold it down, however you want to do it. But this guy, it's done. This girl's done. Now, if you have pinched your dress and it seems to be falling off and it doesn't stay because maybe the hole was a little bit too big, what you can do is you can unwrap your arms and like this. So say your hole was just a little bit too big and your dress kept on slipping off of your dancer. We don't want that to happen. 
So what you can do is you can take your arms off, make sure your dress is secured, and then you can take your arms and wrap them around the top of the dress, and that will seal them on. So that's two ways you can do it. Okay, so now you can fluff her dress even more, and she looks like a fairy dancing flower. So you can make a bunch of these, and you can have a little dance recital. You can spin them with the pipe cleaner underneath, and ta-da! So this is also a really great way to make flowers with your um, coffee filter designs. And just saying, Mother's Day is coming up, and if you haven't had a chance to go get some flowers from the florist, you can always make them and give them to your mom on Mother's Day, which is Sunday, so coming up very soon. Okay, so for the dragon wings, what you wanna do is you're gonna take your coffee filter, you're gonna fold it in half, just like this, and this one you actually need scissors. You're gonna cut a, watch first, because I don't want you to cut through it, you're gonna cut a triangle out of your coffee filter like this. Do not cut through it. You'll see that there's that space right there. Okay, so it's like a little tiny piece of pizza that you cut out of both uh, sides of the coffee filter. If I were to unfold it, this is what the coffee filter looks like. Okay, but folding it up, you cut out a little triangle piece. Don't cut through the center. And what you're gonna do is you are just going to twist it. Did I twist it or did I just pinch it? Oh, I think I just pinched it. So you just pinch it just like this. So it makes a really cool bow or butterfly, however you wanna look at it. Um, but this, you are gonna take this and you are going to slide it through the body of your dinosaur or your dragon. So you'll see that the coils, when you made it, they have these little spaces that you can put the legs through, you can wrap the tail around, um, but you can also take this and slide it right in there. And that is how you make the wings for your dragon. See? So he can fly around. And this guy has blue and green wings, multicolored wings. Um, and the other one had like fiery orange wings. So two different ways to use your supplies. Uh, you can make all sorts of different animals with um, your pipe cleaners using this method. This method is so super fun. So like you can make the head, wrap it, wrap it around, and this really can be the start of lots of different body types. So you can actually have this be a person and make the legs extending down this way and then put the arms. Whole bunch of ways to use this uh, technique of wrapping to make this coil into making your little pipe cleaner sculptures. Um, so let's see if we can do that super quick. And then I will demonstrate how to make your flower for Mother's Day. Okay. So here is your head, your body, slide these through and make them into legs and ta-da! So that's a person with legs, now let's make his arms. So slide those through and you can wrap it just to seal them up. And you have your little person with a body and legs and arms. And if you pinch like that, then he has hands. And ta-da! So just a cool way of using pipe cleaners to make different things. Um, so yeah, just a fun way to play around with things. Um, and I'll put this to the side. So here are our dragons. You can do all sorts of things like add more pipe cleaners to make little um, bumps on his tail. 
you can add the antenna, you can add all sorts of things. Um, this guy has the antenna on him, and he has the long tail, the forefeet, uh, and his wings as well. And then we have our two dancers. These are super easy to make. You can make a whole bunch of these and make a whole fairy garden. And quickly, if you want to make some flowers, you do it the same way. You basically take your, um, your coffee filter, pinch it, pull it through. You can cut a tiny hole, take your pipe cleaner, Now these ones aren't dry yet, so they're a little soft, but you can pinch this off and when it's dry, you can fluff it and it will be a flower for mom. So that's one way to do it. Another way is you can take it and kind of accordion fold it. or just kind of clump it like this. You can take your paper towel or your pipe cleaner and wrap it around, twist it, and if you get enough of them, fluff it and it can look like a flower. So these are cool ways just to use um, your painted watercolor uh, coffee filters to make all sorts of stuff. You can make flowers, you can make fairies, you can make dragons, you can make stained glass designs on your windows, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I'm going to turn this up so you guys can see me and I'm going to sign off for today, our last day of mythological creatures. And um, so once again, I'm Miss Elaine. I'm from the Firehouse Art Center. I am loving doing these art classes. As my, um, in my new position as executive director, I don't usually get to teach uh, these art classes and I really miss teaching them. I love getting in with the kids and just playing around and experimenting and making a whole bunch of stuff. And sometimes we make mistakes and they don't work out. Like this dragon was my first try. So he wasn't the best. He's still kind of cute and I might work on him to get him to stand up a little, but I put like the wing structure on him if you can see. And so if you want to play around with your dragons and put wing structures on them and then try and glue the um, coffee filters to that, that could be really super cool. So, you know, art is kind of just getting in there, trying it, experimenting, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, and then just going from there. And I, I'm really excited to be able to do these uh, with the kids online. Um, and we're going to continue to do them even after we open up the gallery because we just want to make sure that when we, um, we start doing our classes again that we are going to be doing so safely to protect all of our community. Um, especially our youngest kids. So um, we're going to keep doing these even when we open. Um, we are set to open May 13th. We're actually getting our physical exhibit on the walls right now. So we're going to be opening May 13th with strict policies for keeping our community safe. Um, we've got the online exhibit, which is going live tonight at 6 p.m. So definitely check it out. These are all local artists. So you could find a really great gift for mom um, from made by uh, an artist in your own community. And they're all small works, so they would be perfect for gift giving. So definitely check it out. Uh, 6 p.m. We're going to go live on Facebook with a slideshow of the artwork that we have. Uh, also, we're going to have a 6 p.m. Uh, the website's going to go live with the online exhibit and market on firehouseart.org. Um, if you've made any of these sculptures, send me pictures. So once again, we've got our fairy dancers. We've got our dragons our flying dragons. Um, so yeah, send me pictures. I'd love to post them on the Firehouse uh, Facebook page. And next week we are gonna do, I actually have two choices. I don't know which one to pick. So if you want to weigh in 
weigh in on the comments of this video, but it's going to either be superheroes or um, wild in nature. So like landscapes and like animals that you can find in the wild. So you pick, I want you guys to vote. So whether it's superheroes or nature and wildlife. Um, I will see you guys next week for that class. Remember, Monday is drawing, Wednesday is painting, and Friday is multimedia. Uh, my name's Miss Elaine. I love seeing you in class. Hopefully, we'll get to see you in person soon. Um, and I will see you next week. Bye. Thanks for coming.